Hello, and thank you for tuning in to my first ever YouTube educational uh, video. My name is BJ Custer. I am a physical therapist in Winchester, Virginia. I work for a company called Functional Pathways that is headquartered out of Knoxville, Tennessee. And I work at a beautiful facility called the Village at Orchard Ridge here in Winchester, Virginia. It is a CCRC. Uh, we provide outpatient therapy services, skilled therapy services. We also, pro also provide therapy services to our AL memory care and our lobbies here on site. I am the rehab director. Uh, my background, I got a bachelor's degree in exercise science from Brigham Young University, and I received my doctorate degree here in Winchester, Virginia at Shenandoah University. Today, I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about arthritis. Uh, it is April of 2020, and right now we are undergoing a, a stay-at-home order, quarantine, uh, self-isolation, all of this, uh, all of these precautions because of a pandemic. And I feel like talking about arthritis is super important because all of us may be feeling these ac acute arthritic flare-ups because of our decrease in activity and uh, you know changes in lifestyle. So my hope is that we all leave with a better understanding of what arthritis is, how we can avoid it, what we can do to prevent acute arthritis from becoming a chronic arthritic condition. I do wanna dissect the word arthritis a little bit so we are all, are all, are all on the same page of what arthritis is. So the, uh, the beginning of the word arthro means joint. Uh, we'll talk about what a joint is here in a minute, but the itis portion, the end of the word arthritis, means inflammation. So when we put the two together, joint and inflammation, we get arthritis. So most of us understand what a joint is. Maybe we, uh, we, we have a little bit more understanding, but I do want to explain it as if uh, this is the first time you're hearing it. Uh, a joint is when you have two skeletal parts that come together, and not only those parts that come together, but the surrounding uh, tissue as well. So for example, uh, let's say I'm talking about my finger joint, okay? So I've got bones that come together. I also have a joint capsule, so that surrounds that joint with some fluid in between. We call that fluid synovium or synovial fluid. Uh, some joints do have other layers in between the, the bony uh, portions. Um, we call those meniscal layers or, or a meniscus. Of course, the most common would be in our knee. And then the end portions of those, jo of those bones typically are covered with a cartilaginous layer. All of that encompassing is what we are referring to as a joint. So when referring to joint arthritis, it's not saying that the bones are inflamed, but the joint itself, the surrounding tissue, perhaps the fluid, the, the joint itself is becoming inflamed. When we talk about inflammation, it's important to understand what the symptoms are of inflammation. I found this cute infographic on Google uh, about inflammation. So th these are five common symptoms for inflammation, including calor, which would be heat, pain, dolor, rubor, meaning redness, tumor, meaning swelling, and then this, uh, this Latin phrase, function, fun, functio lasa, probably butchering that, which means loss of function. So when we have an arthritic condition, we typically, are, or excuse me, an inflammatory uh, response. These are the symptoms that we are uh, typically looking for. When we're talking about arthritic symptoms, that's when we're looking for symptoms including pain, aching, stiffness, swelling, or just general debility. There are dozens of different types of arthritis. In fact, if you watch local news programs, uh, you may see commercials for famous golfers that discuss their psoriatic arthritis. Uh, in casual conversation, you may come across folks that have a rheumatoid arthritis versus an osteoarthritis, which is the most common 
of the arthritic conditions, but I want to talk about rheumatoid and osteoarthritis and explain briefly uh, what the, the differences are between the two. So rheumatoid arthritis is a, an autoimmune disorder that affects multiple joints throughout the body. Typically, when we are talking about a rheumatoid arthritis, we generally hear folks talk about rheumatoid arthritis in their hands. If you look at this, um, this graphic here of someone's hands, you're seeing a typical presentation of a rheumatoid arthritis flare-up where we are getting um, this ulnar drift. In fact, this would be a chronic rheumatoid arthritis uh, condition where we're getting the, the, the end part of the digits drifting towards the ulnar or pinky side of the hand. Very common in someone with a rheumatoid arthritis condition. When we talk about osteoarthritis, so this second infographic here, we're looking at the joint itself and the deterioration or the increased wear and tear on that joint. Again, this is an artist's depiction. I think this uh, last image here is probably a little overplayed, but you can see that typically the, the joint or the end part of the bone begins to deteriorate and uh, basically creates two non-articulating or poor articulating uh, bones. They just don't move the way that we want them to because, uh, the, because of the surface uh, deterioration. Again, here's another uh, infographic. Here's a healthy joint on the left, a normal joint where you have synovial fluid, which is in between the two bones. You've got this, uh, let me change my colors here. You've got this cartilaginous layer on the end of each of these bony segments. Um, and then you, you've got good healthy bone endings as well that are well protected by that cartilaginous layer. This second infographic, our synovial fluid has lessened. Okay, so we don't have much fluid, or I, I typically refer to it as a hydraulic fluid in between the two joints. Um, you know, the synovial fluid or that synovial buffer is lessened. The cartilage, you can see, is also lessened because of wear and tear. And we're getting pretty close to some bone-on-bone -bone contact here with this osteoarthritic condition. You do see some joint swelling, of course, uh, here on the outside. Again, you typically see with an osteoarthritic condition, puffed knees, puffed knuckles, uh, maybe somebody that has an elbow that's a little bit bigger than their other elbow or, or somebody that doesn't have an arthritic elbow. Comparing um, apples to oranges really between two individuals, but when you compare it between one individual, you can typically see uh, joints that have swollen uh, because of an arthritic condition. Here in the rheumatoid arthritis picture, you can see how the whole joint becomes just really inflamed. Again, not typical for the to see that wear and tear on the joint unless the rheumatoid arthritis has been something they've been dealing with for, for decades. Uh, the, the, the joint itself typically is preserved, but the swelling of that joint takes place and oftentimes uh, uh, positioning, um, uh, again, that ulnar drift takes place uh, throughout the body, which can render hands and feet and uh, other joints essentially useless, making things really difficult to do. Turning a key, writing, uh, chopping foods becomes uh, really difficult with people with uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Here is a, an x-ray of someone with an osteoarthritic condition. Again, most common joint disease is this osteoarthritis that I'm, that I'm speaking of. Um, let me reposition here. Uh, and then this is, it can be a primary diagnosis. So again, if I'm looking at an x-ray, I am not seeing arthritis on an x-ray. Uh, I oftentimes hear patients come in and they say, you know, the doctor x-rayed me and they saw a whole bunch of arthritis in there. It's not that they're seeing arthritis, they're seeing the effects of arthritis. They're seeing, for example, here on this x-ray, they're seeing this bone-on-bone -bone contact. 
they're seeing possibly some joint deterioration, which I'll show on the next slide. So they're seeing the effects of an arthritic condition, but arthritis itself, it's not something that you can image and see, oh, there it is, that's the arthritic, uh, that's the arthritis right there. Uh, it doesn't quite work that way. Um, again, it's a, G, a degenerative condition that's the result of increased wear and tear on joints. Here on the left, we see a normal knee. We see good joint spacing here, nice synovial fluid, probably some really good intact meniscal layering going on in between this knee joint. The bones itself, the contour looks healthy, uh, no deterioration of the bone joint. Looking here at this right side, this is, this is where we're seeing the effects of arthritis. So the meniscal layer has worn out. We're seeing some bone-on-bone -bone contact, probably some wear and tear of the cartil cartilaginous layer, which would be more depicted through an MRI. Um, but this is what we're looking for, classic symptoms of knee pain and that bone-on-bone -bone contact. In fact, this, this x-ray resembles almost perfectly what my mom's x-ray looked like last year in uh, 2019 and resulted in her needing um, a knee replacement. Go into our uh, next image here. Uh, so this is a little quiz for you all. If you look at this hip and this hip, hopefully we're seeing a, a big difference here. So this hip here, we've got good contour of the hip joint, the head of the femur, nice and round, articulating really well with the socket of, of this hip joint. A uh, little bit of a buffer in between. We've got some good joint spacing. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of bone on bone occurring. Whereas if we look at this other hip joint, it's really even difficult to make out the head of the femur. It's taken on this osteoarthritic uh, shape, very jagged in nature. Um, really just a lot of wear on that hip joint. And we can almost not even make out the the, the acetabular uh, part of the joint here, really difficult. I'm, I'm really just kind of making up here as I draw what the, the acetabulum should look like. But um, this joint has uh, undoubtedly suffered arthritis for some time. And this is what we typically see on an x-ray. This is what your doctor says when, he's, when he says, I x-rayed you and there's a lot of arthritis in there. Again, seeing the effects of the arthritis, not necessarily visually seeing arthritis. I like to use the analogy of what, um, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the hip a lot here. You know, again, we can get arthritis in our back, we can get arthritis in our fingers, our elbows, our ankles, our toes, anywhere that bones come in contact with bone, uh, that surrounding tissue can become arthritic, but it's easy to visualize what a ball and socket joint. And so I use that a lot in my examples and my imagery here, but please understand that osteoarthritis can happen all throughout the body. So here, this nice bowling ball on the left, we've got a nice smooth surface or that head of the femur that's well covered with that outer laying, layering, but an osteoarthritic hip would look a lot like this one here on the right, where the cartilaginous layer is gone, we're getting some bone exposure, maybe even some bone on bone. I like to call it like this mortise and pestle type uh, grinding that occurs. Uh, unmistakable for a physical therapist as we mobilize a joint to feel that grinding sensation, that popping, sliding, clicking. Uh, it, it's, it's something that you can undoubtedly feel yourself when you're walking. Um, but this is what a head of a femur would look like as that osteoarthritic condition becomes very chronic. Here's an artist's depiction of, again, what an osteoarthritic hip would look like. Again, I use this because it's, uh, it's very easy to visualize. Uh, as we look at this artist's depiction here on the left, we've got a great cartilaginous layer, good, good covering of that head of the femur. Uh, we've got an acetabulum that is almost perfectly contoured with that uh, head of the femur. Beautiful articulation between that joint. However, when that cartilaginous layer begins to wear, 
On both sides here, we've got some deterioration. So the acetabulum becomes deteriorated, the head of the femur also becomes deteriorated, and that articulation becomes really poor and painful. Uh, very uncomfortable for somebody to walk into, to do general functional activities because of an osteoarthritic joint. I love this picture because maybe we all feel this way. Uh, this is a two couple or a couple sitting down, obviously just done with this quarantining, just wanting to get out, wanting to go uh, maybe shopping, go to Target, but they are choosing to stay at home and be safe, uh, just not enjoying maybe each other's company as much as they should. But Exacerbation of acute arthritic pain is very common as our activity levels decrease. As an example, let's say I go on a, on a plane uh, ride to uh, um, California. I'm on the plane for four hours. I get up and all of a sudden my joints are so stiff and I feel achy or, or maybe I get an eight hour night's sleep and I wake up and oh, all the joints just feel really stiff and you know, it just takes a little while to get moving. Those are acute arthritic flare-ups. Inactivity has led to joint stiffness or uh, joint swelling. Maybe in here down at the bottom, I even talk about too much activity. Let's say the quarantine ends and I go to the mall and I shop for nine hours. Uh, too much activity can lead to a joint inflaming and becoming pain and stiff and uh, all of those uh, signs and symptoms that we talked about earlier. Prolonged sitting, of course, can, it can uh, cause flare-ups. Poor range of motion, again, that's a secondary effect to inactivity. Let's say I'm sitting in my chair or on my couch for hours during the day, but I'm used to getting out and doing gardening work or walking around the community or going up and down stairs, and I'm just not doing that as much as I used to, I would expect, no doubt, that acute exacerbation of arthritic pain. A common pattern that we see uh, for folks that come in and complain about pain, let's say it's a knee pain. Uh, you know, I wake up and my knee hurts, but as I begin to walk throughout the day, it does get better, and typically around two or three o'clock in the afternoon, it gets better. Then I eat my, my dinner around five, go back home, retire for the evening, my pain is typically worse uh, at night. Uh, again, it, it's worse as we begin our activity, beginning of the day. It be, gets better as we start our activity and progress through the day, but then we might have those, those prolonged activities throughout the day, sitting in chapel, sitting for lunch, maybe watching a movie, where those arthritic flare-ups can uh, occur again. But again, typically worse in the morning, better as the day progresses. So why this video? What is, what is a physical therapist doing here chatting with you all about arthritis? How is it that we can prevent these acute arthritic flare-ups from becoming chronic? Please understand that many of you watching this video may be suffering from chronic arthritis. Uh, I'm, I'm referring to these acute arthritic flare-ups. How do we prevent it from progressing to the chronic conditions? It's not to say that with chronic arthritis, there's no hope, but we're going to take it one step at a time here. Little food for thought. Uh, this is a, an expression that I use a lot for most of my initial evaluations. A strong joint, if I have a joint, let's say again, referring back to that hip, my glutes are strong, my hamstrings are strong, my uh, quadricep muscles are strong. I've got good, strong, solid musculature around that hip joint. The stronger it is, the more stable that joint is. Very unlikely that I'm gonna experience some slipping or some uh, possible uh, dislocation of that joint. It's a lot more stable. The muscles are holding it together and it's, it's just a good, solid joint. The more stable a joint is, the more well-behaved that joint typically is. On the flip side, the weaker a joint, the less stable the joint, the less stable a joint, the more painful that joint becomes. So when we have these either acute or chronic flare-ups, we're looking, as physical therapists, we're looking at how strong that joint is. Are we dealing with some muscle weakness, some muscle instability? 
Um, and if that's the case, we know that we need to develop a specific exercise program for that individual that can help strengthen that joint up and really create some more stability and keep that joint more well behaved. A saying that I learned as a child in church, it is better to prepare and prevent than it is to repair and repent. So as we prepare and we, we keep our joints strong and stable and we prevent those acute arthritic flare-ups, it is less likely that we're going to need repairing uh, and, and, and repenting of, uh, of those, those degenerative joints. So preparing and preventing is what physical therapy is all about. Our goal, and, and I will say in our community in Winchester, even the surgeon's goals are to keep you off of the operating table. Uh, it's really comforting when uh, somebody has a chronic arthritic condition, but they're wanting that patient or, or, or that person to do therapy first before they go in and operate. See if there's anything that we can do in a a uh, conservative approach first versus going in and operating on the table. So I've been really happy working with the um, the surgeons in the area in in trying to prevent these uh, these joint replacements from occurring. But ultimately, some people it's inevitable they need to go and get their joint replaced, and of course, therapy is there after the joint replacement uh, occurs. So how do we prevent these acute arthritic flare-ups? Heat and ice is a great way. Uh, let's say I'm going to go out for a long walk. I'm going to heat my muscles and my joints up first. Maybe start with a little bit of a warm-up uh, stretching program. Ice is always great after an event occurs. Let's say, again, I go shopping at the mall, and you know I know that I'm going to be feeling this the next day. Icing whatever joints uh, you're, you know you're going to feel it in after the activity is going to be really helpful in reducing the, the inflammatory process. Of course, over-the-counter anti-inflammatories are also an option. Uh, always check with your pharmacist and your doctor to make sure that you are a candidate for taking an anti-inflammatory. I've already talked about stretching before activity. Always very important to do uh, before you go out and exercise or go for long walks or shopping sprees, whatever the case is. Using a cane or walker to help offset the pressure through a joint, maybe a knee or a hip, is uh, can, can be beneficial. Staying mobile. Again, I understand this is April 2020. We're going through a pandemic. We have the orders of staying home and, and reducing our activity. Um, just this morning, I was pulling out of my driveway. My neighbor, two doors down, was out exercising in her driveway, doing uh, jump ropes and push-ups and various stretches that uh, can keep her mobile. She's not able to go to the gym, but she's adapting and she's doing exercises in her home. Here at the Village at Orchard Ridge, we are blessed to have a great fitness staff who has made a lot of uh, their exercise programs available on Touchtown, so you can tune in and do some of those exercise classes in the comfort of your home. But it's so important to stay mobile. Aquatic exercise is a great way to offset uh, pressure through a joint when we eliminate gravity from the equation. Typically, we feel better. We get in the pool and I'm able to move more and my joints feel great. I get out of the pool and uh, the gravity takes, takes its toll and you know those joints may begin speaking to us. I do have a lot of uh, patients that ask me about shots. Uh, typically, the shot that, that is referred to by the, the layman is these chicken fat shots or these chicken shots. Uh, the, the technical term for these is orthovisc or synvisc, different companies, different names. But what they're doing is they're injecting fluid into joints, basically increasing the buffer between the bones. So maybe the doctor sees that you're pretty close to bone on bone or that cartilaginous layer is wearing, so maybe increasing a little bit of fluid in those joints through shots uh, may help. Of course, cortisone is a systemic anti, I'm sorry, cortisone is a localized anti-inflammatory. You can get that injected into a joint, helps reduce the inflammation versus a systemic uh, anti-inflammatory over the counter. So again, if my right knee is really painful, I'm taking an over-the-counter anti-inflammatory, not having much success, 
the doctor may resort in getting a cortisone shot in there and reducing the, the inflammation locally. Unfortunately, for some folks, surgery is, uh, is an option or is inevitable. Uh, getting a joint replaced either partially or totally. Um, of, of course, therapy is always here after the fact and even before the fact. We do offer some prehab programs. The stronger someone is going into surgery, the faster their rehab process is after surgery. So doing a pre and a post surgical rehab intervention is always beneficial or usually is beneficial. I will say most of the time is beneficial. Um, and uh, so yes, yeah, here's some, these are just a list of some of the possible remedy, remedies for arthritic flare-ups. Again, I do work for Functional Pathways here at the Village at Orchard Ridge. Uh, we are still open during this pandemic. I want you all to know that we are taking all of the proper precautions. I've got my mask here that I wear. Uh, we sanitize everything, even from the pens that you use for paperwork to the doorknobs that you touch and the chairs that you may touch. Everything gets sanitized between patients. Uh, we are taking every precaution to keep you all safe, to keep us safe, and to, to keep therapy services open and available to you all. I am a firm believer in therapy services. I believe that therapy services, especially in a time like this during a pandemic, is so important to take advantage of, to come down, keep your joints mobile, keep them healthy, keeping a, an acute arthritic condition from developing into a chronic arthritic condition is, uh, is, is what we do. We are thankful to be here. I am always available for individual questions. Um, if you have any questions, you're free to email me. You all should have gotten the newsletter, which pointed you the direction of this uh, video. At the bottom of that newsletter is not only my email address, but our phone number as well, if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I look forward to making some more videos again in the future, talking about various ailments that we go through and suffer through and how therapy services can help. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy.